Hey there, chaps. Uh, like we promised at the end of the last tutorial that we did on the Asterix Manager interface, uh, Matthias is going to try to do a different action other than log in. Uh, basically meaning we're going to try something different today. Uh, Matthias, <laughs> yes. what are we going to do? We, first of all, we learn how to find out which commands or actions are available. Mm -hmm. So login is nice and you need it because <laughs> otherwise you will see nothing. Mm -hmm. um, but how can you find out which further actions are available specifically on your system? So okay. it does not help if you sh just Google for it and then you don't know is this supported in my asterisk version okay. or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We discussed this earlier regarding the dial plan. You yeah. have to find out which application is available on your system. <coughs> And thankfully, there is the same syntax how you can find that out on the asterisk CLI. That's pretty handy. Yes. Yeah. And we show how it works. So take it away. This is the asterisk CLI of my asterisk server. And I can show things like manager, show uh, application, Apple manager, show. Command. Oh, the command, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's not completely the same. <laughs> it's almost the same commands. So those are all commands which uh, the asterisk AMI can understand. And you can also search for them. Commands like, no, that's also not possible. That's all, that's, <laughs> only, that's only possible with the applications. applications. Okay. okay. But you can go into more detail in each command yes. option. Yes, so you have to use your mouse wheel and scroll <laughs> through it, or maybe the search function of your uh, secure shell. Mm -hmm. So, okay, just go uh, through it. Um, here you can see a lot of commands. An interesting command is, I think, um, where I can place a dial because that's often something I want to do. Mm -hmm. And therefore is um, the command originate, which okay. can originate a dial. So I go into details. Maybe that works. Command and then originate. Here can, yeah, that works. <laughs> Um, here you can see the syntax, so action originate, and then you need an action ID, a channel, a extension, blah, 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 blah. Everything in brackets is optional. Um, this is a mandatory field you have to provide. Okay. But there are some yeah, relations. So if you use context, then you have, if you use extension, then it requires context and priority. You can see this in the documentation like this. So what we try now is to do the same as with the asterisk call file. Okay. In the asterisk call file, if you remember, we said connect this channel mm -hmm. to that snippet of our dial plan. Okay. Um, you can do the same in the asterisk manager interface and we will see if it works, how it works. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we will just try it out. Um, we just go again to the asterisk AMI. If you don't know how uh, to open the asterisk AMI and to authenticate, watch the other tutorials. And now I make an action, which is originate. By the way, it's all case sensitive here. So the action has to be originate with mm -hmm. a capital O. Then channel. The channel is zip slash James and I want to connect James to the context. You were too slow. Ah. <laughs> so you have to use a program <laughs> as I mentioned before with a library. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> it's what we made earlier. Uh, yes, um, <laughs> you can prepare your commands here. Mm -hmm. Copy them. And then it works great. <laughs> um, you get a call from Anonymous. Why? Because the asterisk system is calling you now, and mm -hmm. then you answer, and then it's connected to the destination. You can change I'm that. So 
uh, you can change that behavior. So you can set another caller ID or something like this yeah. with uh, the originate. So originate has a lot of um, parameters you can set. But you can see it's relatively easy to initiate a mm -hmm. call. And it's not, a, uh, for me, it's not so mystic like the call file you throw it in and then whoo, magic. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing with the call files, I mean, we said it a lot when we were doing them, was that, I mean, they are quite handy because they can be mm. uh, quick and easy. Mm. But once they're done, they're gone. Mm. Um, and this scenario, you can sort of recycle it more easily and... Yes, and you can read the, you can read the result. So mm -hmm. I uh, just... Um, started the command mm -hmm. and then I get the response. So here is what's going on in the system. I don't know if I can find it. Um, yeah, a lot of information. This is the drawback of read all, write all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, I do it again. Maybe. Uh, I'll try it again, maybe it does not work, but you get immediately a response if it worked or not. So this was completely wrong. Oh, it works also. <laughs> um, I'm, you can read what happens in the asterisk AMI, mm -hmm. and then you can say, okay, I initiate or I originated a dial, mm -hmm. and then it immediately worked. And I can read all the events and be sure what happens. Yeah. I can, I, I, if I read the events, I know if you answer the channel or not, or if you just said hang up or something like this. So I can control mm -hmm. what happens. That's cool. It's mm -hmm. too much detail now here in yeah. our scenario to explain every uh, event which happens. But, but in, you when, get the point. When our, sh uh, our viewers are testing it for themselves, they'll probably uh, restrict the amount of information that's being put out. They won't have read all. Yes. They may just say, we want read log or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you use a library for your favorite programming language, um, that's all done by the library. Mm -hmm. um, another thing is if you put in a command there, um, you can, uh, in the most commands, you can add an ID and then you get back the ID of the answers and you can say if there is a lot of traffic, this was the answer to my request. Uh -huh. So things like this, but that's all done by the libraries which are available. This is just for demonstration purposes to understand how it works. And in the library, would, you would say new call and then you get back if it worked or not. And mm -hmm. then you can monitor events and that's relatively easy if you are a programmer. If you're not a programmer, you should not use the asterisk AMI, you should <laughs> use the call file. So yeah, okay. it's true, um, you can understand the basic concepts mm -hmm. if I just show it like this. Yeah. But it just makes no sense to type it somewhere in and okay. do Fair it enough. like this. So you have to create at least a script. So if you're a system admin, use the call files. If you're a programmer, use the AMI. This could be a very good tip. Okay. <laughs> hey, I've got a top tip. Yes. Hey. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, so, Matthias, is that it for the AMI? or? I would say, yes, if there are new recommendations for IDs, go to pascom.idsscale.com mm -hmm. and vote for new ideas or add new ideas around the asterisk AMI if you want to see more. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, well, thanks very much for watching. Uh, as Matthias said, um, if you've got a topic or you uh, want to vote for a topic, then visit our profile. Um, so that's it for this on the AMIs for now. Thanks very much for watching. Till then. See you. Bye.